When was the last time you changed your opinion about something? I think it would be this coronavirus situation. I have to admit, I, I wasn't necessarily skeptical, but I wasn't necessarily really very worried about it. And uh, I really credit our parish staff for uh, helping me to get more sensitized to it uh, and to being more alert and vigilant about it. Uh, our parish staff really uh, took this seriously early on and uh, really had a good sense of what was coming. So uh, it didn't change my opinion, but it, it sure helped me uh, come to a better awareness about it. So I would say this situation. What would you do if you knew you were going to die in one day? Well, I think I'd have to rally uh, all the people I know and love, uh, family and friends and I would want it to be somewhat celebratory, but uh, knowing me, I'm sure I would also have to give a speech of some kind, uh, some attempt at being profound at the end of my life. Uh, but uh, I'd also hope to have some good food and drink. Uh, my sister used to ask us uh, what our last meal would be if we could choose. And I always say Thanksgiving dinner, turkey, dressing, uh, sweet potatoes, all that good stuff. Uh, so hopefully there'd be a banquet like that and uh, just time with a lot of people I love. Uh, let's see. What are some of the events in your life that made you who you are? Wow, that's uh, a lot of possibilities there. Um, I would say um, being ordained a priest certainly has shaped my life uh, and I think consequently has probably shaped who I am. It's not an event as much uh, as it is a, a context, but I think being the fifth of six children, uh, being part of a larger family, has definitely shaped who I am. Uh, Catholic education has definitely shaped who I am and uh, what I value. Um, I think taking a leave from the seminary from 1989 through 92 had a significant impact on me. It was uh, one of the best things I've ever done. It's made me a much different priest and I think much better priest and person. So those are, those are a few of them. If life is a game, like some people say, what are some of the rules? Hmm. I'm trying to do these a little more freewheeling and not look ahead too much. Um, I would say, um, to treat other people well, um, to recognize that you're not the center of the universe. It's not all about you. Um, I would say um, just to try to learn some humility uh, before creation and other people. Uh, uh, some rules. Um, and I would say... Uh, just to try to be yourself as much as you can, uh, to find your true self, because I, I believe our true self, as we're created by God, is essentially good and has incredible power. So uh, I think that would be an important rule. They say that everyone has a book in them. What would your book be about? I think my book would be about uh, uh, just coming to a greater freedom in my life, um, growing into uh, a, a better sense of integrity and, and honesty and courage um, and uh, claiming my gifts and uh, living from there and uh, not necessarily doing it the way other people expect. So it would be some, some book about... Um, authenticity and integrity and uh, finding my voice. What could you do with $2 million to impact the most amount of people? Oh boy. Uh, of course, I would say donate it to building our legacy at St. Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, I think uh, probably education. I think uh, uh, for people who don't have access to education, I think there's a long-term benefit to that uh, and that it would multiply itself through the lives of, of people as uh, their lives were hopefully made better by uh, that opportunity 
to develop uh, something that they really love. What would be some of the most annoying things about having yourself as a roommate? Oh boy, I think I've mentioned a couple of these. Uh, one, I love to lock things. Uh, so if a door has a lock on it, I'd probably drive a roommate crazy uh, with locking things. Uh, another thing uh, you've heard, I don't change the batteries on the smoke detector, so that would probably drive a roommate crazy. Uh, I tend to let things sit in the refrigerator longer than I should. Uh, I don't usually let them um, get to, to some terrible state, but things are usually in there longer than they should be. Um, so those are a few things. I, I'm pretty neat. Uh, I don't necessarily uh, like to dust or vacuum, but I love to have things in their place. Uh, I might drive somebody crazy um, rearranging things and putting things where I think they should belong. What do you want to be remembered for? I would say simply uh, just to be remembered as, a, as somebody who did good. I, uh, um, you know, in some way that my life had a good impact on, on other people, a lot of other people. Um, I think um, I consistently hear people say that my calmness and humility uh, are gifts. So I guess I would hope that those would be lasting uh, gifts for people. If you could make one rule that everyone had to follow, what rule would you make? Oh, off the top of my head, uh, my my brain jumps to driving. And I think I'm going to say, uh, you can only drive in the left lane of a four-lane road uh, if you're passing or if you're going faster than the traffic in the right lane. Uh, that's, a, that's a pet peeve of mine. Um, a close second would be that you have to use your turn signals. Um, it's, it's, uh, that's very frustrating when I wait to turn and a car's coming and then they turn the last street before if they'd had their signal on, I might have foolishly believed they were actually intending to turn. But, um, I think mandating the use of turn signals, um, I know it's already mandated, but if there is a way that they had to do it, uh, that one might be worth it. What's something that happened or something that someone said that changed how you view the world? Hmm, I, uh, I, that, that would take some thought. Uh, I can tell you something that somebody told me once that uh, it was more about me and uh, it was a real revelation. I didn't want to hear it, but uh, it really made me think. Uh, I was having a disagreement with somebody and I was talking to this friend of mine about it, and I said, you know, it's not like I'm enjoying this. And he said, I think you are enjoying it. That really stopped me, uh, because I thought, I, I think he's right. In that situation, I think he was right. And it was really good to hear that. And I've never looked at myself or other people the same way since. I think it's good when we have a friend who can tell us something like that, uh, to wake us up and uh, to to shift our point of view and uh, to remind us that uh, we're not as innocent as we think sometimes in, in a conflict or a disagreement. Uh, if you were put into solitary confinement for six months, what would you do to stay sane? I would have to say meditation, uh, especially because it's not dependent on having a book or a pen or a piece of paper. Um, I think meditation is uh, something we all can do much more of that would benefit all of us uh, much more greatly. I've learned recently that um, meditation really changes uh, the brain, that it, it changes how we uh, react to things, that a steady diet of meditation uh, can really help rewire our brains and how we respond to stress or disappointment or frustration. Uh, that that meditation really uh, can, uh, you know, in some ways you could say make us wiser. So I think meditation would be the best, uh, again, because it's not dependent on anything but a, a, a willing heart.
heart. And uh, I think you can only go right by making some room for God. So uh, that's 10, I think. On to the next.